Right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. All right. My name is Yusuf Baiji. I am the director of uh, certification programs. So I see a lot of enthusiast people around. So how many, if I can get a raise in hand, how many of you are Cisco certified in any certification? You are in the right place. <laughs> so today, my session is going to cover a little bit of overview of... Here comes Yusuf. All right. We'll just let that finish. All right, that was timely. <laughs> so our session today is going to cover a little bit about uh, Cisco certification programs, what's happening in terms of uh, evolution and what sort of changes that we are going to introduce. So my team is primarily responsible for all the certifications. So you name it, associate, professional, expert, you know, the worlds of CCNA, CCNP, CCIE. So how many of you are here CCNA certified? CCNP certified? CCIE certified? A couple. Now, the important question I have next is how many of you are planning to get certified? Well, it's very important for those who raise hand. If you're planning to get certified or even recertification, you know, to maintain your certification, this is a good session for you because I'm going to share some important updates that are going to happen in the certification world. So even after the session, if you have any questions, I'll be hanging around in the lounge so you can ask me anything. <clears throat> so first of all, this is the landscape of our complete portfolio. Like at a very thousand foot view, we call it um, three uh, swim lanes or, or personas or job roles. So we have the engineering certifications that is very popular. It's been out there for more than two decades. Uh, a lot of certified individuals, you know, CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, as well as CCD. So this is like, everybody knows that. Then we have the software work stream, right? We have the DevNet flavor of certifications, DevNet Associate, Professional, and Expert. By the way, DevNet Expert was recently launched, not too old. Very few people have passed this exam. So it's something very kind of, you know, gaining momentum and growing in popularity. Then we have our Cyber Operations certifications. We have the Associate and Professional. We have not yet announced the Expert. So it's something work in progress. In addition, to these certifications, I wanted to double click on the actual portfolio. So if you look at the previous slide, this is like the thousand foot view of CCNP, but there are lots of exams tucked under CCNP, lots of exams under this, lots of exam under this. So this is like that complete chart and overview of all the certification exams that we have in our portfolio. Now, in uh, February of 2020, just around the COVID time, we had launched a new uh, framework for the certification portfolio called CERT 2.0. Every, everybody know about that? No? All right, so let me educate you there. Certification 2.0, the goal was to reinvent, uh, revamp the entire modality of the certification. When I say modality, meaning in the previous life, CERT 1.0, like 20 years, there were several requirements. So for example, in order to do CCNP, you had, there was a prerequisite to take CCNA, right? It was a prerequisite, it was required, not anymore, right? So we changed a lot of policies. In CCNP, we used to have multiple exams. So if you wanted to do, let's say, for example, CCNP security, you had to take three exams. If you had to take CCNP data center, you had to take four exams. There was like quite cumbersome requirements. With the new CERT 2.0, we changed the structure of the certification such that now you have to take only one core exam. We call it the core. And the core exam is basically the foundation of all the technology within that architecture. So if you are talking about security architecture, all the elements that comprise of security is going to be in the core. 
after the core exam, what we did is just like the university, when you go to a bachelor's program or a master's, you have the core subjects and then you have electives, right? You choose from like out of 10, you have to choose two or three. Same principle applies here. If you want to earn your CCNP in security, you have to take the core and any one of these electives. So there are five electives to choose from. You only need to take one, whichever you feel like. And we call it the one plus one formula. So whatever you want to do data center, you take the core and any one of these five. You want to become DevNet certification, you take the DevNet core and any one of these concentrations. We call it concentration, it's electives. So now it's much more powerful. The certifications are more aligned to people's job roles. So if previously what happened is when you were pursuing your certification, you had to do everything regardless of whether it applied to your jobs. Now, if I was a security engineer and my focus was only on firewalls, why, why do you want me to take VPN or web security or email security, right? Like that's not your specialization. That's not your focus area. So now you can choose whatever your focus area is and double click on that particular certification. So this is the new framework that we have introduced. More importantly, we have also expanded our cyber ops professional certification. We introduced the incident response uh, concentration as well as threat hunting concentration. So these are some very new programs that we have introduced. In addition to this, we are also currently working on some new cloud exams. So something about cloud connectivity or application security with cloud solutions. So these are all work in progress and you will soon see some announcements coming from our team. So this is like a thousand foot view of what our portfolio is. Does anyone know how to take advantage of this dotted line? Can anyone raise hand like, do you know what this is about? Absolutely. So I'll repeat what the gentleman said. What we have done is, I, it's my personal um, keyword, I call it double dip concept. So you know how you double dip in some things. So what we have done is with one exam, you can earn two certifications. So let's say you are pursuing security was our example, right? So you take the core exam. You have five choices to pick the elective form, right? We also have a sixth choice called security automation. It's also part of this row. If you take the core and you take the security automation, you get what? CCNP security, right? What we are giving you an opportunity as a double dip is that this security automation also counts towards the DevNet professional, which means now you only need to take the core exam. With the core exam, with this core exam, and one concentration, you get two professional level certifications. With three exams, you get my point, three exams, one, two, three. With three exams, you got two CCNPs, CCNP security and DevNet professional. How good is that? So now you can plan and leverage your certification journey more kind of, you know, more runway, more value for your certification. So even for those of you who are already certified, let's say you are planning to do recertification. You can always do the same thing. If you're planning recertification, take any of the automation exams along with the core and you not only renew your CCNP, but you can also get DevNet certified. That's how this model works. Any questions so far? All right. So now I have some more interesting or important news to share. We have now introduced just three months ago a new structure called certification lifecycle management. What it means before I go into the details of it, first of all, everybody will agree with me that technology is changing very fast, right? 
every year new solutions, new products, new innovations is coming through. And more importantly, we need to ensure that the certification exam is relevant to your job. Because if you know the latest and greatest technologies, then you will be relevant to your job. The solutions that you're designing for your customers or whatever service industry you belong to, you need to be more and more relevant. Now, in the past, there was this kind of catch-22 problem that certifications were always kind of in that race with the technology changes. Technology changes, certification updates. Technology changes, certification update. They were always kind of running behind because we were not quick enough. We were not fast enough in the certification uh, uh, updates. Certification used to change every approximately three years, four years, sometime even five years. Now imagine in today's world, three years is a long time. I mean, you take an exam, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, Let's say you take the firepower exam or you take the um, cloud exam. They will change after a year. And the exam topics that you studied will probably have changed. So we, as a certification body, we need to update the exam very frequently. Now, there is a problem or, or kind of, again, a, a hit and miss, or how do you call it? If we change too much, then it will be a challenge for you also like, oh, every year this guy is changing exam. I cannot keep up. Cisco Press material, training courses. There is a whole ecosystem built around the certification industry, right? So we derived a new mechanism called Agile. You know, Agile is now everywhere. So even in certification, we adapted Agile as a model to incrementally update certification small chunks, small chunks. We don't want to make a huge change that affects your learning journey. How many, including myself, how many of you have got caught off guard, like you were preparing for a certain certification, and three months later, Cisco announced, oh, we are changing this exam. And you're like, what? Like, oh, I was preparing for this exam, and now Cisco decided to change something. You never knew the timeline, what I call like the calendar, the, the um, publication roadmap. So now we are publishing what we call certification roadmap. There's a big sticker behind this wall. Exactly. If you go in the lounge, you will see a, 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 a complete calendar, predictable, transparent. Now there is no guessing. If you are studying for CCNA, we will tell you exactly when are we going to change next time. Is it six months? Is it nine months from today? If you are studying for CCIE, we'll tell you exactly when is it going to change the next time. So there is a pattern. There is a whole schedule calendar that we are now publishing. So what that does is not only it helps the, the student community, but it also helps the ecosystem like Cisco Press they will align with this calendar and update the Cisco Press books. Training vendors, they will align with this calendar and say, okay, Cisco decides to change this exam six months later, we are going to align with it and publish some changes to it. Does it make sense? So now we are actually going to be more what I call predictable cadence. That every year of February, this exam is changing. Every year, the month of June, BLA exam is changing. There is a whole pattern, right? Are you with me? This is the roadmap that has been published at the back of this wall. This is exactly the calendar you can kind of um, put it like on your, on your uh, desk. So how to read this? There are three ways to read this. You follow this color coding, orange, blue, green. Orange means that for whichever technology, let's say we are talking about um, security. So when do we, do we, like my team, when do we start reviewing this security exams? 
there are five exams i told you in security so we need to review like exam number one is it still relevant has the technology changed do we need to make any updates to it so it's called the review cycle so we gather subject matter experts in the room we say hey you know can you go through this blueprint and make sure everything is still relevant to the job role do we need to add anything do we need to remove anything maybe some products are retired end of life or maybe some new products need to be added so that's called the reviewing once we and that takes roughly like 2 to 3 months once we finish the review cycle then we announce it to the customer announcement public announcement that's when we go and tell you that hey guys you know there is this exam called security core we have decided to update it with blah 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 section 2 section 3 we publish and announce the whole blueprint that's called the announce and then we give you some time to prepare right we we cannot expect you that monday morning i announce it and tuesday morning i say okay new exam you'll be like oh that's not fair i need time to prepare so we give you 3 months 90 days to prepare for your revision so that's called the publishing the new exam so once you know this pattern let's start from here let's say in the fiscal quarter q1 in the month of august september october somewhere here we are going to review data center and collaboration portfolio what is the portfolio data center portfolio this whole portfolio this complete thing we're going to review the core exam the design exam the troubleshoot the san aci advanced aci automation and the ccie we're going to review holistically the entire data center portfolio and see if we want to change here you want to change here you want to change here get my point that's the review cycle once we do that data center review this is quarter 1 review in second quarter sometime in november december january we're going to announce it to our customers so data center and collaboration will be announced in q2 and the same data center and collaboration green the new exam is going to be launched with the pearson so when you go to pearson and book your exam let's say data center core exam or collaboration core exam the new exam will be live after 3 months you get the pattern now so it's very predictable every year the same cycle will follow every year ting 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 same here we start reviewing security and enterprise in q2 then security and enterprise in q3 will be announced and then security and enterprise will be launched in q4 so you follow the same cycle like this agile again one year later you come back the same will happen again data center and collaboration in q1 of the next calendar or not calendar year fiscal year these are cisco fiscal years cisco follows a different uh, calendaring it doesn't uh, q1 doesn't mean january q1 means august september october so you see here august september october of 2022 August September October of 2023 same thing again you go fast forward one year q1 of August September October of 2024 data center and collab now you get the pattern so it's predictable fixed no more guessing every year same pattern so this is important here to explain how does the revision work let me give you a little uh, overview of the two types of revision that cisco does we do a major revision a holistic a complete overhaul a revamp it's called major revision minor revisions the agile revisions incremental smaller bite size frequent major revisions are less frequent every maybe 3 to 4 years or maybe 5 years minor revisions every year 
the way to distinguish, like if I didn't tell you all this, and I just gave you an exam blueprint and said, here, CCNP Security Core 4.0, the blueprint version number. If the numbers, blueprint version number changes from two to three, that means it is a major revision. It's a simple principle, X dot Y. X is the major, Y is the minor. So if Y is changing 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, that's a minor revision. From 2.3, suddenly if you see 3.0, that's a major revision. You get my point? So major revisions happen every three to five years. Minor revisions happen every year. This is the chart you can compare side by side. What are the different elements that will or will not affect the change? By definition, like I said, major revision, larger, bigger, in, in, in terms of the change that happens. Smaller, but frequent. The most important part is this, the percentage of change. How much percentage of change will happen in a particular exam? In major revisions, it's about 20%. Let's say you, you pick any exam in our portfolio and a lot of technology has changed, a lot of Cisco products have changed then obviously it will demand a major overhaul, which means it might change 40% or 50 or 60%, then we'll make that a major change. But if it's a minor change, less than 20%, it could be 5%, 9%, 12%, smaller change, then it is a minor revision. You get my point? The other elements over here, topology changes, because in most exams we have topologies. So does the topology change? Yes, it will change in major, yes, if needed. Not compulsory, but if we need to, we might change. But in most cases, it does not change. Do we change software revision numbers? Absolutely, in major revision, that's the whole point, to keep the new operating systems and new versions. In minor revision, maybe, sometimes there are um, reasons to upgrade the new software to include the new feature set, or maybe there is a bug, so you have to upgrade the software. Most important, hardware, equipment. In major changes, yes, we do. There are hardwares that go end of life. There is sometimes NPI, new product integration. You know, new products get introduced in Cisco. But in minor revision, no. Absolutely no. We do not change any hardware. It will be the same topology, the same hardware. Everything will remain same. So it's less disruptive. If we do minor revision, it's less disruptive. If we do major revision, it's more disruptive. All right? <clears throat> Notification to customers. Remember the announcement, the public announcement, the surprise element? No more surprise. If we are going to do major revision, we will provide six months notification to our customers. If we are going to do minor revision, we are going to provide three months notification for associate and professional level exam, and for expert, for CCIEs and CD, we'll give six months. Because obviously for CCIE and expert level certification, you need more time to kind of absorb, to prepare, to adapt to the change so there's more time given. 